When you first unpack your file there, you notice that there's nine little files roughly in it, a couple of gradient uh, images showing you the different types of gradient and sizes or whatnot. There's going to be a DLL file that has some of the uh, commands that the uh, app will use. And a uh, sample height map or road map, which is just really a specialized height map, and a default terrain scan. So you just want to go ahead and run the uh, terrain. It's going to start off by generating a default terrain, and that's fine. Just a few key key uh, show the tools window and setting it up. I apologize if the uh, fan on this is running out here and get it out. But fortunately, I got to use the built in one. Anyhow, uh, so yeah, you get a default terrain, which is a mixture of um, terrain skin, and then you can put any file you want in there as a JPEG, that here, or simply edit here. But that's a default terrain as it loads. So we're just going to leave it like that for the moment. So you could replace this with any other file. Is it saying there it's not blank and attempt to make find the next file? Now there's another command that uh, can be put in there. We're just going to cover that right now. And you can type in curler. And in fact, the second channel is also alive. Putting those two commands in there, it's going to attempt to generate a curling noise texture. Each slot will make a texture and put it in the respective slot in, on the mesh. I don't have, I haven't given you access to the noise functions that generate these textures. I just left them left for where I keep mine for now, but you will have access to that later. Now, um, you see your gradient. I've left it on the uh, default outline gradient. Now that you've got those there, you just want to go ahead and build a terminal. So let's go build a terminal. And here, you'll see that it's now covered in some curling noise, which looks very rough, quite ugly, and a little weird in the background, which you'll see in a minute. But what you need to do is figure out what scale you plan on keeping the plan in here. So let's just get relatively close. We're going to work with uh, zero. Now, I personally put that at about 64. And that's going to change depending on what size your image is. Let's just um, use reset to set that to so just set texture channel zero to UV data in the map to multiply by 64. Then you've seen the pattern has changed a little bit, giving us some extremely uh, close detail. So if you get close to the map, you can see the up to one of the big greens of dirt or whatnot. This video is picking that up. Maybe I'll just keep it a little bit rougher. Right? But we also might want to uh, work with channel 1. This here uses UV1. Alright, we're going to set that to channel 4. You can see there's a mix pattern. I don't work so much about the background right now. It doesn't really blend so well when we're using these procedures right off right in the middle. I don't have the filters on them set correctly, so there's no milk map or anything like that. I'm going to get that funny sort of look. But the map in there is uh, it's not too bad, it's pretty close to what we want. But we've now generated two new files, and those will stay. So we can use them by name. So let's go here. Of course, you could put them in the opposite way around if you want. Now, if we build, it clears the map. So, let's just reset channel 1 to channel 4. And go to 0. And set it to move. So here we go. But now you notice because we've loaded the texture, there's the proper filtering on the image for the distance. It's not sort of shimmering as it was before. And, uh, you know, these, these particular maps were not made to be seamless. They just come really, really, really close to be seamless. So 
Um, you may see some of the scenes on the internet. The idea here though is when you get up close, you have a real sense of detail of it. Uh, you know, the gravel work when you get up close. And you can adjust this. Um, I'm just going to do this with this too. And put it really gross. 12, you notice it gets really rather rough. 24, looks pretty good. Maybe we're going to go to uh, 36. You know, it just all depends on how far you expect your, your player to be from the ground. And you can set everything at 64. Very fine pattern. So let's click with that. The other thing we want to quickly look at here well, is we are going to push in the different ways uh, you can use the roadmap. And I put it on here to replace, which means everywhere that there's a non black pixel, pure black pixel on the road map, it will replace what you have in the scene. So, set it up here. And you get it close. You know, vertical stretches have a hard time mapping. As you can see, they don't look quite right. Maybe the course of flight and pulls out as well. Um, I might make a flight later to stop the gradient and affect the road maps and allow you to have a, a different gradient for road maps. It'd be kind of cool. Um, might also uh, give them some other texture maps in. But how that road map is made or how the road map is applied can you come down to which one of these mixes you get. So I'm just going to pick exclusion and set up that which will be so here, so here we've gone and applied it, and it, now it's going to show up for our ruins. See? It's got a subtle effect on the thing. The whole thing is like a hidden lake or a cloud in the middle. It's going to be a nice view of the small things. So, a little cabin to explore. Um, the road has been cut into the hills and built out above water. So, now, another thing, that's a moderately low resolution terrain. You can double the resolution, but I would recommend if you're going to double the detail, also double the number of surfaces. You'll find that the mesh loads faster when you've got more uh, frames left over on there. So again, I need to do 7 dB. Now you notice with the higher resolution on the uh, detail, there's actually more vertexes. If you look, that map is quite Saturated. <laughs> got lots of polygons on them. But uh, that lets you see a lot of the detail. Now, if you load this file up in your standard program, like Milkshake or, Milkshake or something like that, that can uh, reduce the poly count, uh, you can have some pretty good results there. Uh, I haven't uh, figured out a decimeter algorithm for this yet. As you can see here, there's a pretty nice land bridge. We're going to make a uh, or I can see or something like that, and just move the right, 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 from the off uh, You can make it wider and measure the roads. The interaction in here um, is kind of basic. It still gets mapped with the same basic map that everyone else does. It's a bit of stretching. But if the multiplication of your detail map is higher, the stretching effect um, can still be somewhat convincing. 
and then you only click the notes a couple times. You haven't spent hours designing them up. Um, and programming and playing them. It's all meant to make your life very easy. Um, of course, you can use my other tool, uh, P3D, to go and further adjust the texture settings. You can use it with code, um, so you can change the, uh, the blending mode of the texture itself so that it's a multiplier or whatnot. But uh, here you're also going to notice that when things stretch, like this mesa here, the revert up here is in one particular vertex color it stretches all the way down below. You get this neat thing where it skips over the dirt level. It goes straight from wet into green. Um, that's also why in and around the roads works pretty good. It stretches right up past into the top type green. A lot of cases it's pulling the road texture up. And that's where you get that sort of rock and dirt sort of look. And of course, in a train like this, you can play with your humidification levels of how stuff is mixing. The other thing you might want to do is change the formula that the train is using to begin with. So, let's do this. And I'm just going to quickly set it down to 64. So, here what I've done is I've used multi absolute multiplicative um, algorithm on the program that makes the train. So you get very exaggerated and peaks and valleys. So it's quite deep. The road still cuts through everything that you expect. So what I recommend for this, to keep things looking in relatively the same height scale, take your amplification, your amplitude, and set it to half of what you're using in your settings. Go ahead and you build your train. And you can see it's become much flatter. Probably more believable as a, as a normal thing. A little bit more believable as a walker in there. Now, the different gradients that you pick, wherever you're setting your center point where the water and the dirt starts in the gradient, will set where the water and the dirt will start here. So you can pick both of them, you can create whatever gradients in the way. So gradient there uh, too. So it's going to be the thing, and of course, uh, something else I'm going to quickly point out. The title up here will show you what trunk is currently being built. So we've changed the way the gradient is. Now we're using that to a different gradient. You can see the water is actually slightly different colors. Um, quite quite straight and then something else I'm going to show you. You don't want any texture. Um, just keep the texture in the rest and put it in the room with the slot is you need right now. If those are empty, it will just build your train. Here you can see what the gradient colors actually look like before the texture of blending and mixing. They're quite bright, but remember, they're mixing with the texture. Oh, one quick thing. You can save this out of the next box. So if you push the X instead of the S, and you can save it out as a single X file for you some other engines other than you.